All right, so the first thing they've introduced is something called as object eraser. So let's say you've got an object or a person in your photo that you don't want. So just go into edit, then go into object eraser and just tap on the object or the person that you want to get rid of. The rest is taken care of by AI. It automatically identifies the object and removes it completely and fills in the gap and it works marvelously well. You'll have to turn it on though. So just go into menu, go to labs and then turn on object eraser. It's turned off by default. You'll have to turn that on. All right, next. Now if you swipe all the way to the left, you get the Google feed and not the Samsung briefing or Bixby anymore. The search bar is missing, but hopefully that will come through but you can still go ahead and turn on something called as Samsung Free, which is essentially content and news for some categories that you can choose and customize and get that feed. So totally up to you, but you've got that option now. Now this one may not be as useful, but nevertheless it's there. So now if you wanna change the color of your folder, you can now choose from the entire spectrum, which means you can choose the color, change the saturation levels and the opacity and create a color of your choice entirely. Earlier in the Galaxy Note 20 here that I have with One UI 3.0, you could only select from swatches and not from the entire spectrum. Not a great one, but it's there now. And guys, before we move on to the next one, it'll mean so much to me if you could just hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification icon. It really helps me sustain the channel and grow it even more. And now let's move on. Now with One UI 3.1, you'll be able to pick up where you left off across devices as long as you're signed in with the same Samsung account. So you, all you have to do is make sure that you have this feature on both the devices. They're running One UI 3.1 and it's supported as of now only on Samsung internet as well as Samsung notes. And you can also copy text, images and more from your phone and paste them onto another device like another phone or another tablet. And that I think is really good. Now, although Samsung introduced video calling backgrounds, They've also introduced video call effects. So let's say you're on a video call using Google Duo. You can now blur out the background or have a solid color so that your background is completely masked. And it does so by face detection, the same technology that they use when it comes to portrait modes. But yeah, you can see that it works pretty well and it's a great way to have your privacy. All right, now let's talk about some camera features that they've introduced. First of all, they've changed live focus to portrait mode and they've also renamed live focus video to portrait video. The portrait mode, however, does add a couple of effects. First of all, they've introduced something called a studio, high key mono and low key mono, along with the ability to match the background color with what you're wearing. And you can vary the intensity and the lighting conditions based off your preferences. Now, all your effects that were there in live focus mode continue to be there, so you can still use those. And of course, they've introduced director's view, which is great for vlogging style videos. You get four simultaneous camera feeds from the ultra wide lens to the primary to the telephoto and the front facing camera. Now for other phones, it may not be all the four camera feeds depending upon the processor, but let's hope it does come into some of the earlier devices. This next one is a pretty small change, but I think it makes my life a lot easier. So in video mode, you can now change the frame rate and resolution without going into settings upfront. And to improve your macro shots, Samsung One UI now brings focus enhancer. So as soon as you're really close to the subject and within 30 centimeters, the ultra wide camera kicks into action and just gives you a more clear picture of the subject. Now, while that happens at the loss of background blur, you can always choose to turn off focus enhancer and get that blur back. But if you want more clarity, you can just turn that on. So just having that flexibility is a great idea. Again, I'm hoping that this makes its way to other devices as well, because they all too have ultra wide sensors. And as you can see, you can get really close to your subject and take those beautiful, clear macro shots. And it's so much better than having those macro lenses that are really bad in quality. In single take mode, you now get the flexibility of deciding what kind of images and videos should be processed and created. So do you want wide or cropped shots? Do you want speed effect clips? If not, you can just turn them off and save onto some processing time. In selfies, you'll now be able to decide whether you want natural looking or slightly brighter looking selfies. Earlier, you had options like warm and cool, which is more to do with white balance than to do with color tone. And I think that makes much more sense. Next, instead of blue light filter, you now have eye comfort shield, which automatically varies the level or the intensity of blue light depending on the content and time of the day. It's just a little more fancy than blue light filter, which was probably not as smart and as adaptive as the eye comfort shield is. Although you did have adaptive color filter for dark mode settings, but my belief is that eye comfort shield works across themes. 
And lastly, Google Messages is now the default messaging app in One UI 3.1. I don't know if it's going to be carried out all the way to other devices as well, but at least in the S21, yes. And you can make your Samsung messages the default by turning on rich communications right here. And that's it guys, those were some features in One UI 3.1 that I discovered and I felt were new. Now I may have missed onto a few, but these seem to be more important. Now, would all of these features make it to your device when the One UI 3.1 update comes to you? Maybe not, because it also depends quite a bit on your phone's hardware. But let's hope that as many of these features get loaded when the update comes to you. Now, when would it come is a question that I really cannot answer because, well, the Note 20 and the S20 series should definitely be the first ones to get now that the S21 already has it. For the other devices, it's just gonna follow. But you know, Samsung generally takes a couple of months to roll it out and then there's also the factor of region as well as your carrier, which determines when you would actually get that update. So be patient, you'll definitely have it soon. All right, thanks for watching guys. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And if you did love the video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification icon. I'll see you guys in the next one.